Coming up on this edition of Sports Desk, we'll check out the action from the start of the season, meet the girls' tennis team, take part in the Ray Hoagland Memorial Meet, and we'll rewind some RV sports memories. Here's your host, Derek Green. Hello everyone and welcome to Sports Desk. I'm Derek Green. The fall season got off to a fast start as the RV football team played host to Pleasantville, Camden East Side, and Shawnee. Let's check out some of the highlights from the start of the 2024 football season. After losing their season opener on the road, the Red Devil football team made their 2024 home debut on Friday, September 6th against Pleasantville. A first-time matchup for both teams helped to add a level of excitement, in particular with the student section, better known as the RV Fan Club. The Red Devils jumped out to a fast start as Devin Dwana took a handoff and went 60 yards on RV's first play from scrimmage. Another fast score came on their next series as quarterback Savian Adams scrambled off the right side for a big game. A trick two-point conversion put RV up 15-0. However, the Greyhounds would immediately respond with a 95-yard kickoff return touchdown and a two-pointer of their own to make it a one-possession game. RV would score once again thanks to a Montre Wilson touchdown run to go back up 23-8. Adams then connected with Brody Deiter on the first of his two touchdown receptions that evening as RV took a 30-14 lead into halftime. Pleasantville controlled most of the third quarter, scoring a rushing touchdown to make it a 10-point game. RV, however, would own the fourth quarter as Adams delivered a pair of perfect touchdown strikes to Devin Dwana and Brody Deiter. RV's home opener was an impressive one, resulting in a 44-20 victory over Pleasantville. The Devils returned home the following week to face off against Camden Eastside. The calendar read Friday the 13th and it was an unlucky start for the Tigers as RV jumped out 6-0 behind big plays from Savian Adams and Montre Wilson. In the second quarter, Adams found Brody Deiter for another touchdown reception. With their offense rolling, RV's defense now had to stop Eastside once more to keep up the momentum. Wilson's interception return put RV up 19-0 at halftime. The Red Devils did not slow the pace in the third quarter, as Adams found Devin Dwana for a 33-yard touchdown strike to extend the lead. A long east side drive capped off their first and only score of the night, as the Red Devils quickly responded with another long touchdown pass from Adams to Deiter. An improbable safety came next, as east side had to drop back 32 yards under tremendous pressure. Running back Montre Wilson's outstanding game was not over yet, as he went on to add his third score of the night. RV won its second straight, defeating Eastside 42-6. For the last game of their three-game homestand, the Red Devils faced off against an old rival in the Shawnee Renegades. Playing Shawnee for the first time since 2019, the Red Devils took advantage of an early turnover to take a 7-0 lead. RV's defense played tough, limiting Shawnee's running game and allowing the offense to build their lead to 21 to nothing, thanks to another Adams to Deiter touchdown connection. Shawnee made it 21-7 before the half, and in the third quarter after an RV turnover, the Renegades crept within one score by adding a rushing touchdown of their own. Facing a 21-13 lead and Shawnee now building momentum, the RV offense had to make another big play. Adams' 65-yard touchdown run was just what RV needed, but Shawnee once again found life to make it a 28-21 game. 
After giving the ball back to Shawnee and now with a chance to tie the game, RV's defense had to make its most important stop of the season. Eddie Yarngo's pick six put the game away as the Red Devils would go on to win their third straight at home, 42-21. to For Sports Desk, I'm Jason Sapp. With so many teams competing at RV, there's a lot of information to go around. For more insight into our programs, let's now join our athletic director for this edition of the AD's Address. Hello, Red Devil Nation. This is uh, RV Athletic Director Mike Lamb coming to you with an update. Um, we're about a month in, so this is our October update. Uh, I wanted to give everybody a couple um, reminders as well, but I wanted to kind of give an update on what we're doing through so far this season. Um, we've had some successful seasons. I want to thank the but the coaches, the athletes, the parents, uh, everything has been great. No issues at all. Um, we're moving along pretty quickly. And, um, you know, next thing you know, we'll be in playoff time and, and uh, starting to wrap things up for the fall. Um, just to give a quick update on on how our teams are doing, um, our boys soccer team right now, couple couple games that they'd like to have back. Um, always competitive, always looking at, at, at you know a top level schedule and looking to um, you know remain up in that top ten in South Jersey that they're that they're a, a, basically a staple in. Uh, girls soccer has, has been really competitive in a highly um, talented conference that we're in and the division. Um, playing the likes of some of the top teams in South Jersey. Uh, they've had a pretty solid season here. I know that they're looking for a couple more wins along the way, but um, from a standpoint of competitiveness, they're, they're right there with anybody in South Jersey. Um, football is off to a good start. They've had some exciting games, some tough losses. Um, really looking forward to the remaining part of the football schedule where we have um, quite a challenging finish. Um, and where this may lead to us with we get to the playoff time. Field hockey has been really competitive so far. They, again, in the conference that we're in, it's a difficult field hockey conference. A lot of really solid teams, and we've been competitive in every game. This is a team that um, is really young and really growing, and not only what they continue to improve this year, but what they could be next year. Uh, girls volleyball is in the same exact boat as field hockey. Um, young team. We were hit pretty hard with graduation. They're learning as they go. And again, in this conference, there's no breaks. You know, you, you play a really good team and then you turn around a day later, you're playing another really good team. And then our girls tennis team, who has been very competitive. Um, they've, they've had good numbers. They've had some, some close defeats, which I think that as we swing into the round two of those rematch games, I think that they can turn a few of those around. Boys and girls cross country, um, there's not really much to update because they don't have dual meets, or but they have been having some really strong showings in some of the uh, relay meets that they've been running in, and their sectionals and bigger meets are, are uh, approaching soon. So one thing I wanted to give a shout out to our coaches as oh, they put on the uh, annual Ray Hoagland Invitational event, which went extremely smooth. It's a way of honoring one of our former great track and cross country uh, legends, is a, a Ray Hoagland, who was a um, also a, a teacher, athletic director, did just about everything here. So they kept that tradition alive. If you haven't been out to the complex um, in a while, the, the turf is up and running. We're in year two. It's a beautiful venue for uh, games. Our suggestions is until we get the bleachers set up out there that you bring a chair to watch the games with. But everything has been uh, smooth. And I can't thank you guys enough. One more thing, uh, obviously most of you have been to the, the home football games. You saw some changes with, with the one entrance, the metal detectors, the, um, the porta potties, a lot of things that we've done to um, in, in, increase the amount of safety that we have in the stadium. But your patience has been greatly appreciated. And, and I think that you know the, um, the way the games have gone have shown how great the RV crowd is. So um, thank you. Uh, we look forward to our next update. And uh, you know, until then, we'll hope to see you at the games. Thank you. The girls tennis team has had to make some adjustments since joining the Olympic Conference, but they continue to show the determination and spirit of the teams before them. We spoke with the captains about how their season has gone so far.
modality and this year I'm a senior and I am the captain of the girls tennis team as well as third varsity singles right now. So far we've had a good season based on scheduling. Last year we had to cancel probably over two weeks of games and for us that's very like special because our season is so compact. We don't have like a lot of games spaced out. It's like game, game, game every day. With our team like environment, I feel like all the girls are really strong and really like everyone's friendly. We all get together so well and we're like a big family at this point right now. My name is Zara Karimi. I am first singles of varsity on girls work at girls tennis and I'm also the senior captain alongside Salma. Overall I feel like Especially with um, the amount of new girls that have joined and just most of the girls having just, like started playing last year, I feel like the atmosphere is amazing and not just like how many games we've won or like how far along we are in the competition. I feel like just how quickly everyone picked up and found such a love for the sport. Our coach is Miss Cunningham and we love her so much. Last year we were introduced to her by um, Coach Fish, our previous coach for the past few years. We had the opportunity to do, I guess, like outside of sport things, such as like media day, having a tennis, like non-tennis uniform, like a workout suit. We've had the opportunity to like do team bonding things and have fundraisers. She's just so kind-hearted and it's so, so easy to talk to her. I feel like, like honestly, she's like my mom sometimes. Having girls support each other is great. Tennis is a quiet sport, yet we need, it's such a mental game. And the entire team works together to like achieve that great mentality when playing. We support each other, we whisper like, good job, you got this. It's so great, we have great team bonding experiences. And especially for me and Salma, we feel that we've been so supported by our teammates, like in the underclassmen and everything. They've supported us so much as being first time captains. So we really appreciate them and appreciate what they're bringing to the sport. Especially the juniors, we love it, it's great. And honestly, we, I've seen so much growth and potential in this team that it's honestly it's just it's so fun being around them. It's the best part of school. I think our best moments, to name it specifically, was our match against Winslow. And they've been a school that we've always been like on par with, but that match was honestly unforgettable because every single match, JV and varsity went to a third set which is very important because usually in tennis, it's either you win the first and or probably like you either win the entire thing or then your opponent wins the entire thing. But going to a third set, it means that you guys are so like on level with each other that you can just play for hours. And essentially that had us literally playing for hours. It's impressive for everybody to have worked that hard for them to be in a tie. Well, tiebreakers are rare. Like it doesn't happen in tennis very often, but I think that's a special moment in our season because it just showed how hard we could work. Like we trained and we ran miles and tried to build our stamina for so long for those matches. We're all one team, we're all one family. If we all like, no matter what grade we are in, we're all together. And that's what I really love about it, the inside, inside jokes, but it's also just niche. <laughs> like jokes that we make and Cunningham joins in on it even though she gets a little like annoyed by the amount of jokes we make. She she likes being around us and she honestly just makes the entire team like excited to be there. So we, with the visitors that do come, they have like shown a lot of excitement and they're like, oh, I didn't know tennis was this fun. Like once you teach what's in and what's out, and what the scores mean, I feel like you can get into it. And it's really exciting because it's so like technical. You never know what's coming. So I think if you come and watch at least one game, you'll be pretty hooked. <laughs>
The cross country team took part in the annual Ray Hoagland Invitational Meet on September 21st, memorializing the late RV track coach and athletic director. The meet brought the teams from across Burlington County and beyond. Let's now join the RV TV crew who are on hand to check out all the action. All right, I'm here joined with Brady McKee, Chris Gray, and Teddy Jones. All right, captains, how'd the race go? Went pretty good, felt pretty solid, had a 40 second PR, got eighth place. Yeah, I got second place. I think I did all right. I think I could have went faster, but it's whatever, yeah. Uh, cool race, fifth place, did solid, got a quick PR. All right, and if you guys want to flex your medals, there you go. Great job, guys. Yeah. Hello, I'm here joined with Mary Cassano. Emerson Skinmaker. All right, captains, how'd the race go? It felt pretty good, pretty solid. I'm making progression for the season, so feeling good. Um, yeah, same. I um, was successful. Both got, well, I got a PR. She medaled. Um, both feeling good. Yeah. I think. But yeah, that was good. good. All right, flex your medals. At RVTV, we have a large collection of shows and games from the past 40 years. Let's now open up the vault and take a look at some classic clips with the Red Devil Rewind. This edition of Rewind first takes us back to 2010 as the RV football team was led onto the field for the first time under then head coach Dan Hausman. Big game today. It's a new season for everybody involved and it will be the Rancocas Valley Red Devils taking on the West Windsor Plainsboro South Pirates. RV has a new coach now and it is Dan Hausman. He was kicking last time. It is high, it is far, it is good. Here's Finelli. Finelli's got He's it. Up and out. Touchdown! Ryan Flynn gets the six points that puts RV up nine for right now. We go fourth and seven for the punt. Oh, oh he dodges a block. It's just him. <laughs> oh my! Are you kidding me? Kelvin White! Oh my! The big red machine. How about that? A whole new season. Arby's got this one in the bag. It's 17 nothing for the final. Houseman's teams would go on to make appearances in the state championship games in 2014, 2017, and 2018. Next, we travel back to 2004 as the RV boys soccer team hosted Moorestown. Later that season, the Red Devils would go on to become co-Group 4 state champions with Kearney High School, marking the first state championship in team history.
Finally, heading all the way back to 1980, let's see how RV's athletic training staff handled injuries and worked to get our athletes back on the field. Hi, I'm Tony D'Angelo for Playback, and today I've got the luck and the honor of talking with uh, Mr. Tom Reidinger, RV's uh, trainer here. Mr. Reidinger, one of his many duties is uh, keeping RV's athletes in the fine shape that they're in. Well, basically the duties of an athletic trainer can be broken down to three areas. That of uh, prevention of athletic injuries through conditioning of people, taping and supportive pads for the athletes to wear to help support injuries and prevent injuries, and um, checking on equipment and field conditions. That's, that's the area of prevention. The other area is, is uh, treatment of injuries, which includes first aid and referral to doctors if it's needed. Okay, thank you for your time, Mr. Reidinger. Appreciate it, all right? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, for Playback Video Magazine, this is Tony D'Angelo signing off. That's all for now. From everyone at RVTV, I'm Derek Green, and we'll see you next time on Sports Desk.